very nice. Back in business, baby. How many weeks in a row is this for us now? It's a it's a record. Indoor record. Could be. It's got to be. Probably yeah. four in a row. Mm. We had a long streak of doing a bunch in a row, and then life got in the way quite a bit. Yep. I think we're starting to get back on track. I mean, our listeners were, were rebelling. They did, oh, yeah. They were yes. like, if we can't hear you in another week. Yep. <laughs> and Chuck kept going, where's the next show? What's the next one? Yes. And I we do, and we have a repeat guest, as like we always do. Oh, hold on. We're not done that yet. Oh, we haven't done our names. That's right. Yeah. Well, what is today's date? Today is uh, September 3rd. Welcome right. to September. September 3rd, 2024. Got all kinds of fantastic stuff going on. Check us out at Dudes Like Us on Instagram. Uh, Dudes Like Us on uh, Facebook uh, for both podcasts and woodcraft for your favorite woodcrafting projects. You can <laughs> solicit us for uh, a project for us to do. Laser, carve, Dudes Like Us. I'm Sean. I'm Paul. I am Jeff. Uh, oh. And and, yes. and shout out to this year. Check out shout out to our Mr. Producer, uh, Mr. Austin, for being here today. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, interesting thing about Mr. Producer, I was kind of proud of him today. You know, he comes downstairs and he's got the old "I'm um, dressed for success" kind of stuff, looking nice for school. Got nice, nice shoes on, and pants. I ran, I've run into him pants. twice now at the gym. Oh, he's wearing like a wife beater. Oh, in the, in the in the shower. Yeah, in the shower, he's wearing like a wife beater and like like really short shorts. Yeah, like really tight like Par- yoga parachute. shorts. Yeah, oh, yeah. Parachute tall pants? socks on yes. with the little fast shorts. stripes and, and a he, headband. He had Crocs on. Yep. No. And you were like, "Hi, Mister Jeff." He did. He buffed up. Uh, yes. and he's like, "Hey, ladies." <laughs> well, it's kind of, it is kind of back to school, so it is time to get back at it. So I guess you work out before school then. Yes. All right, because. Good for you. <laughs> nice. That's nice. I love that. It's hard, man. It's hard to have be a routine where you're consistent. You got you got to want it, and it sounds like you want it right now. I love it. It's good. Well, getting all those ducks lined up. Yeah, yeah. My son started his uh, automotive technology school, and that was cool. He got his uniform, and it looks he looks all like you know playing the. Does part. he have his all his sign in and everything all figured out? Uh, everything's all fig- <laughs> everything's all figured out. Is it crotchless? It's uh, I you know it's not not for, at for, all for oh. for breathability. But dude, they don't mess around. I mean, they wanted you know like when you go to any you know dealership, right? Well, mechanics all wear like particular pants and shirt, and and uh, you have to have a belt that's not metal so that you can't scratch the the the, the vehicles. And they yeah, they take it seriously. And they should right. It's you got yep. lifts and all sorts of shit, and there's chemical spills and. Yeah, got Steven it. got his. He has to wear a uniform. Uh, he had to order pants and T-shirt. Like he got a set of two uh, specific boots. He actually already had the boots. And he got his bunker gear. I think he got that, which is the the big fireman gear. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, badass. Um, and he also got his uh, face mask. It makes it that much his more real, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, everything's starting new stuff. And Dawson started his... Uh, Stars internship today. Very nice. The Dallas Stars. Very nice. I know. Up here in Frisco. Yeah, up here in Frisco. A lot of firsts this week for uh, for our, what our boys got going on here. What about your What about well, your world there, Chuck? <clears throat> My son did get his real estate license. So. There you go. Yeah, and he's nineteen. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Residential, commercial. What's he looking for? I don't know yet. <laughs> he doesn't know yet. Well, the real <laughs> estate. Well, the real estate world is changing quite a bit. Uh, on the real estate agent side, I found this out. Uh, a lot of rules or laws have just been passed where you cannot bake in a percentage for the buyer's agent into your contract. So when you when you say it's going to cost 6% to sell this house, my agent, the selling agent, will keep three. The buying agent would get three, right? right. So now we actually had to re-sign a contract. Uh, because it just went into law, uh, where we only negotiate the seller's agreement, and the buyer's agent will come to me separately with an, his own contract, and we'll negotiate a percentage. Interesting. So, um, you know. So does that mean you got to have a separate loan for this? Not a loan. It'll be a separate agreement with the buyer's agent. So It'll you get, take that and go to the bank and get yeah, your loan. Get wrapped into the loan. No. It's part of closing costs. We're selling our house. Not mm-hmm. this house, but my dad's house. Right? So the selling agent 
who is mine, who's selling the house for us, she'll get two and a half percent, right? Out of whatever we sell it for. Um, previously, it was 5% because she was allotting 2.5% to the buying agent. Right. Well, that is no longer the case where you can lock that in at the time with the selling agent. It has to be a separate contract and you have to, and you negotiate directly with them. Uh, Which means you're, so you're, you're negotiating with the buyer and the buyer's agent. Correct. So they'll go, we'll give you, let's just say you want $100,000 for the house. We'll give you the $100,000 and uh two percent uh agent fee how does I, the, so it's a hundred and two thousand how does the big guy get his ten percent though the government <laughs> actually real estate nevada does, is not taxed we, we see what you did there so that so that could break that could break some deals for sure what two right? percent if you say if yeah you no, can, if they come in too high because i talked to our, our yeah. agent she goes she goes if they're reputable and what what i've seen is they'll come in at uh, uh, a two percent or two and a half or whatever. Yeah, you know, if, I think if, that's kind because of they're going to jeopardize the deal. So it's kind of realigning, it's lowering across the board, lowering correct. How I much think they're it's making. standardizing what it is. Yeah, because I imagine that I, I think there's room to negotiate with maybe the underwriters or maybe the bank, for example. They may be in there and they say, "All right, well, we're going to." I don't know. There, there, it, it seems to me like there's some wiggle room for them to make an extra point or two on the on the back. Well, end. and it, and and the, I think the, the complaint. Well, I could just say no. Well, and I think the well, if com- you can't see it, if it's like hidden now, well, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it all up front. Well, no, you, you, your your percentage is in your contract you signed with your the new one. Well, the old one as well, because we we signed at five percent, two and a half percent for her was in the right end, two and a half percent for the buying agent. Well, right. I decided the new one that did away with the buying agent, so now it's a two and a half percent. Right. There'll be another no, but contract. I, I, but I think to Sean's point, I mean, we we've been in this mode where they just it's like a gravy train for the realtors, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And they're just it it's, stops it's, all it's that. Baked, it's baked into the it doesn't matter what you do, it's baked in there. Everybody's gonna get their money. Well you're negotiating every Yeah, every you can one negotiate now and it makes them it makes them work for it. Well, isn't it great that all the real estate went up forty percent and their fees stayed exactly the same right. percent, right? Like right. they're the only ones not hurt by the housing income you know, housing prices going up. They're like, Hell yeah. No I'll shit. Send, I'll sell this yeah. house for So they're getting a smaller more. percentage, yeah. but it's on a bigger number, so they get they're making more. Yeah. God, that's crazy. So your son's going to have to deal with uh, negotiating with the selling people now. Did they right. teach him that through his school and everything? But, I'm sure they did. You know, he came home with like eight thick books, and he went through all of them, and he aced his test, so I'm sure yeah. he's up on it. I keep trying to send him articles. He's like, Dad, I got this. Yeah. Like, so okay, is he still, good for him, man. Do you still have to, him? yeah, really, I mean, but is he, do you really have to negotiate, or there's got to be a standardized cost, 2.5%? Well, they, said, they said if they come in... Um, high, you can say, no, I don't take that deal. You negotiate with them. Say, no, we'll do 2.5%. We'll do 2%. We'll do 1%. See, she but, goes, it could even lead people to go to actually come down lower to make sure the deal gets done. Right. So yeah. this is playing into everything like it always has. A buyer's market, a seller's market, right? Who's going to have the leverage, right? So it caps it at 2.5%, is no. that what you're saying? So no. You can come in there and go, yeah, I want 10% to buy your house. And I'll be like, no, we're not. All right, so that's now I'm of- confused. I mean, so uh, before it was baked in, and you you knew what it was, but you didn't care because it was baked in, you know. But now you can say, uh, so does it have like a cap on there? Is you said two and a half? Well, that's what I'm getting charged now, but from from the agent oh, that's that, representing me. Okay, but that's not like, I mean, we don't know if that's that's standard practice. That's going to come to drive some that. some some do two, some do three percent. You know, you see, you you hear the standard in the in the in the industry was six percent, and it was shared between the two three agents. Three and three, three and mm-hmm. three. Well, it's come down. She goes, I do five, two and a half, and two and a half, right? And that was on our contract. We signed it and uh, went on our way. And then a, a month later, she goes, All right, all our contracts have to get redone because of this new change, the new law, yeah. right? So I need you to docu sign this. Yeah. So it's it's you're right. It, it says right there, right in that that ballpark. So the standard real estate commission. A rate is typically between five and six percent of the home uh, sales right. price, split between the buyer's and the seller's agent. Right. However, now, as you said, the rate can vary depending on the number of factors. Correct. So now, I've already got the two and a half percent from my agent. The unknown is what the buyer's agent's going to ask for. Right. And it could range. She goes. It could range from one to three. She goes, and you can elect to take that or not. Yeah, and you can. Or say- you can go back and go. No, 
Yeah. I'll do two and a half percent. I'm not going to reach your three. And they can choose not to buy your home. Correct. Yeah. Well, it makes sense to me, especially if they just walk in the deal. If you if you do the legwork and you call like, hey, I need someone to to sell this, and they don't do a whole lot of work, why, why should they get full three percent? Right. You know, if they're going to go in, and they're just like, yeah, and it turned around and sell, sold really quick. I mean, what did you really do? In you know? my in my opinion, it should. I don't know if it will, but it should give realtors uh, incentive to work harder, yeah. for, work hard for their clients. Right. I mean, when you go to a restaurant, you you've got standardized gratuity that you're supposed to supposed to put on your bill. You know. Uh, you know, 15, 20%, 25%, depending on how small it is. I think the smaller the bill is, the higher my percentage goes up. Right. You know, of course, the, the larger it gets, I think the tighter it gets. I don't try to go below 20%, uh, but, you know, I'm not going to tip them a dollar on, on you know, 10 or, or, eight, or 8 bucks, whatever. No, when eight I go bucks, on yeah. dollar, dollar beer Wednesdays yeah. and I get four beers, you know, I, I give them a buck. I give 20 cents. That's 25 percent. That's 25. I mean, that's 25 percent. Tell the whole. Don't spend it all in one place. Well, the whole tip, (laughs) I think the whole tip uh, thing has gotten out of control. Uh, I understand the restaurants and and certain things, but when you go in to a carryout and you're going to pick your food up and it goes, do you want to leave an 18, 20, 25 percent tip? No. I know. Well, I'm not. Well. I've got to argue with you a little bit. I will put a 15 percent because they're, they're getting tipped out of the same pool. And they did have to put some work into getting your food to that counter. Now that they, they bring it to your table, from the or, box and put it on the table. Uh, I mean, the, the kitchen, the, the kitchen it. staff sent in on the tips. You no, know, I'm not tipping. I, yeah. I didn't tip before. I'm not tipping now. That's not the standard. They're trying to make it the standard. That's you though. That is me. It's not standard for everyone to tip like that. You know, and as a server, being in the service industry, I appreciated that because you know when I would bartend at certain places, bartenders are different. I think. Well, they're the ones that have the food. So like when, not when, when I go to McDonald's, I'm carrying out or Chick-fil-A. Oh, that's different. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Well, okay. I'm talking about you went to yeah, on the border. I agree with that 100%. I don't yeah. think we you need know, to tip McDonald's, McDonald's out. That's ridiculous. You're yeah. going to on the border or, you know, Chili's or something like that. Yeah. If the bartender's doing it or something like that, that's different. But if I'm going to pick it up pizza and they want a 20% tip because I came in and picked it up, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that's different. Sorry. I agree with that 100%. That is different. That's not... Yeah. yeah, but there's there's other things like I said. If, you know, we work at a place like a Bennigan's or a Chili's, and and you're you're the guy, the official takeout guy. You know, you're, you're no, dependent I, on that. I, I I agree with that. You, know, you pull it's, together, it's, you bag it up. I guess I didn't put my level of carry out. And when I said carry out, well, I, mean, I meant you, something. But you bring you quick. bring up a good point because there have been times when I I'm at a place and I don't feel I feel like they didn't really do anything. I just showed up and that thing pops up on the screen and I have guilt. And then in the moment, yeah, in the moment of my guilt, it, I'm like, oh, 15%. But, and and me, then I think to myself, oh, but fuck, let me, man, let me I really need to do kick that? this a little bit harder. And, and, and this is a slam to those places that are doing it. There are certain coffee shops, which I don't think it's warranted for some coffee shops. I don't think it's warranted for McDonald's to do it. But I think I put that on the shoulders of the owners of, of, of Correct. The, 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 um, yes. the, the restaurant or right. the, the McDonald's or whatever the fuck it is. You know, I, I put it on their shoulders because they're being cheap. Meaning that, okay, well, my employees now work for tips, so I don't have to pay them the pay $15 them dollars asking fee. Hey, and if the, the customer, yeah, and if the customers so, don't give them tips, that's on them. Yeah, well, well, but my, what I'm driving at is that if you make tips for a living, that as an employer, you only have to pay them, I don't know, two bucks, three bucks an yeah, hour? Yeah, it's very small. It's not yeah. quite, so it's if, half a minimum. That's kind of what the thing is. All right, well, they're no longer getting paid that, so they're kind of dependent on those tips. And I think that's bullshit. And yeah. if I find out that's what they're doing, McDonald's, I'll, I'll boycott them. I don't go to McDonald's anyways, but. So what about okay? What about Subway? That's like a perfect example. So you go up there, and they're making your sandwich, right? And then at the yeah. end of it, it's popping up the the well, they 15, make, they 20, 25 percent. Well, they make your food whatever restaurant you go in. I what know makes that different than the pizza. I, because it's made to order. That's my question. Well, my pizza's made to order. Okay. Well. Okay. So, so would you feel different going to a Subway or a Pot Belly? You know, I mean, they're both sandwich shops, right? They're both sandwich shops. No, if I'm sitting down and they're bringing it to me, if I'm ordering a sandwich, I'm not tipping. But what, what do you guys think? I mean, should you tip at Subway? No. No, I think if you're standing in line, I mean, you might as well be at Furs or anything like that. You're standing up. You're they receiving paid, the product. Their get, job is to get, scoop, you know, plop, They get slice, paid to make that sandwich. Spread. I, I hear you. I, I'm not going one way or another. I'm just Chipotle's telling you, going the same there have been way, a number yeah. of times that I, I'm inconsistent, quite honestly. The uh-huh. thing pops up, and in the mood I'm in, I'm like, you know, well, fuck it, or no, or you know what I mean? Well, I, and, I'm and, not and, consistent. And, and, what, and what's, what's the guarantee that my... Twenty percent is making it back to the employees. No, they I'm just it. not. That's a good 20, point. The twenty percent. Sometimes they do it. Sometimes it goes in a tip pool. 
Well, well how do we know this? We That's don't. true too, because maybe that tip part of the tip pool is like, oh, the boss is like, I'm taking ten, I'm taking ten percent of that. Or, all of or the owners going, or all of it. I'm making twenty percent more on Spe- my food. Especially if it's electronic. It's one thing if it's a bucket of money that the employees see, which is why. But I, if it's if it's just on your card, scan, scan, scan. Who knows if the people see that money other than the owner? Which is why that no taxes on tip thing that both presidential candidates even though Apparently now yeah. yes uh, you know, are for it, it's it's really important because now all that is through the credit card right and that the government can see that as income and they're taxing it that's why they got all those new agents right but but before you would order a pizza slide the pizza guy a couple bucks and maybe a joint or something you know oh yeah <laughs> that's normal right yeah normal oh, wow. normal stuff right uh but that would that would never get reported right that would go into your bag that that you know at the end of the night, they cash you out. It's like as Representative Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know about the. Uh, I mean, even delivery is kind of weird sometimes. Yeah, I just. Well, that dude got in a car, paid for gas and insurance yeah. and tires, oh, and everything I, to no get your question. house. No uh, question. I always tip you well on be, those. If it's delivered, no question, I tip. I'm anti delivery. I'm you, anti delivery. Yeah, but if you do have it delivered, no, I wouldn't. You tip. Unless I could physically go do it. Right. Suppose you fell down the stairs and uh, broke your leg. It just cracks me up, but I, I get where you're coming from. Well, I, have, just... I have a problem going, I can go down there and get that food in 10 minutes, or I could spend the extra 10 or $15 and have someone bring it to me. And who knows what they've done to it it's on It's all the about the quality of life. I, yeah. I, 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 I think I like the convenience factor. Uh, if what they're going to do to my food, uh, I'm not a... No, I've I, read some... I've read I don't some, really have a big issue with I've that. I've read some, some shit where they're just like, food's picked at, open... What percentage That's would you crazy. say? I'm 80. saying point zero. <laughs> oh wow! Well, no. well, damn! Never mind. Yeah. I'm never doing the delivery again. Well, it's not just that. I mean, you'll it, never know. It, it it drives Sean nuts too. I'm anti drive through as well. Right. Right. Uh, I, I I feel I can get my car and I can go pick my own food up. If it's a Chick Fil A, then yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forget the drive. And uh, why they're fast? No, they're not. You're joking, right? I'm not joking. That is the best. Do you ever go? You they never, actually have the best drive through I, I have ever I, seen. I know they're fast, but like I can also walk in and walk out before half that line is gone. Oh, okay. Well, it's not because they're, it's because there's so many damn people. It's going because there. there's so many damn people. Correct. Going. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I agree with that. All right. Sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. Sorry. You well, don't, you don't want to go in. I mean, you always want to go in. I'll go in and pick my stuff up. Uh, and the delivery thing, I've never used them, and I don't ever foresee it unless, like I said, I just physically can't do it. Dude, are the my son's generation? I mean, the money they're spending on DoorDash? It's stupid. I, I'm just like, guys, I mean, and he was like looking at his credit card, and he was like, damn, I spend, I'm spending a lot of money on DoorDash. Yeah. I'm like, are you serious? Or just fast Come food in general? On. Go pick it up yourself and yeah. save That's some of the, 50% of your money. I, I agree with that. Right. I mean, look, if you're, if you're on a budget... By all means, you should not be buying. You should not be going out and buying coffee every day. Oh shit! Correct. No Starbucks. Wipe right. that shit off the map. There's and so many. You things. should never get your food at a fast food place if you aren't making a comfortable living. And if you then you need to save all that money. Buy a fucking sandwich at the, make a sandwich. Have yeah, a can, yeah. hey, have a yep. canned meat night. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> can. That's that'll, what I would, that'll but, impact the health, which costs money. <laughs> Well, I mean, but look, it's what it's going to do. I I think I'm going to talk about not necessarily my kids, but but kids in general. I think that the kids nowadays need to make more of an effort to learn how to cook their own food and to be fiscally responsible. Yeah. Well, I mean, by doing that, they are being fiscally responsible. Learn how to cook your food. I think that you get a lot of joy out of it. I think that I mean, look, like Jeff, me. I mean, I'm just now starting to learn how to cook. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain satisfaction to it. Yeah. And I think that if you start sooner. Then I think that you become a better cook the older you get, and I think I think that's great. You'll be able to to, to plan your meals better. You'll be yeah. able to go to the store, and you'll be able to line up your groceries. And you'll save thousands and yes. thousands of and, dollars that you could spend on alcohol. And it's good for you too. It's better for you. Yeah. Well, it is. I mean, you know what's going into it. I tell you what, I make dinners that are just as good as these restaurants, if not better. Sometimes, yeah, sure. You know? I mean, my argument is, I mean, yes, there's an art to cooking, right? You 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 got to know your spices and stuff, but for the most part. Follow the recipe. That's There's a recipe book. Just follow the recipe. Well, just anybody like, who's, like being a chemistry anybody lab. who's intimidated, like there's a reason why those recipes exist in a recipe book because somebody who was good at cooking put together their recipes and made a book out of it. So you can change it up all you want, yep. but just start with the recipe and follow the damn thing to the T well, you you and can, see how it goes. You could Google any recipe. I want to make cornbread. Right. Cornbread. 50 recipes will come up. Oh my God. It's overwhelming. Well, which one do I think looks the best right. or whatever? Right. 
I'm doing this one this time. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's really no reason why anybody can't cook. Now, they can say, oh, it's bland. Well, because you're not willing to put some of the, the spices that it's calling for. Right. Right? But, I mean, everybody should be able to cook. Right. It's really not that hard. Yeah. Right. I'm enjoying some of the cooking now. I mean, I'm getting better and better at it. I'm learning. You know, I was real high on the sous vide and, of course, I'm kind of kicking that out the door. I mean, I like some aspects of it, uh, but, you know, I mean, I'm only going to cook it for, like, reheating food. Like, I right now, I just... Well, I, I, think, I, think the, I think the brisket ruined it for you. It what? did. Hold on, the 84-hour brisket? <laughs> uh, the, the, yes. Week and a half. I think, yeah, the, it, I think the plastic <laughs> deteriorated on that. Yeah, well, oh. I mean, it was. I was kind of like, what the hell, now man? he has microplastics in okay, balls. Okay, well, hold on. You were, you were following some dude on, on TikTok or, or uh, YouTube. But, well, you know. Uh, maybe, I mean, and it was like, uh, wasn't it? It's like some sensationalism going on in that, with that guy's no, website. I, it, okay, yes, but here's the thing, is that when you sous vide uh, steaks, and meats and, and beefs, it, you know, it tastes so much more tender. Yes. Sure. Period. 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 And, and your brisket went bad? It, no, the brisket was it was very good. It, it wasn't that it tasted bad. It was just that when you take that plastic bag out of the water and you set it down and you touch it, when you pull your hands away, it feels gritty. Tastes like Ziploc. <laughs> no, it didn't. You couldn't taste any of that. I think it was just starting to <laughs> deteriorate, fall apart yeah. is what was happening. So I'm oh, not certain gross. if it was the exterior only, I'm hoping. Well, but- it may not be designed. The plastics might, might, might not be designed for that amount of temperature for that long. Well, that uh, it could be, be that for simply that long, but I mean, moving forward, I'm never doing that again. I'm right. not, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to those guys and tell them that, you know, you guys need to stop tell them that or at least you need to have some sort of disclaimer uh, yeah just saying hey look man there are certain brands that will deteriorate faster than others you may want to look into that yeah but best case you're spending best case you're spending 30 bucks worst case you're spending 100 bucks on a uh, brisket uh, on a brisket so you don't want to you don't want to fuck it up oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, well the thing is it did taste good it did taste good and it's super good now so i mean like if i get a tomahawk or something like that it's three inches just- thick yeah, picking out some. Just of had the oil sheen to it, yeah. kind of like yeah. Biden's windshield yeah. when he got <laughs> oil cancer. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Seed oil. Yeah. You say Biden? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. You know that guy's just like he's like on vacation all he, the time. He vanished. I know what. He, what I mean, is he, 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 what he's is he still doing? running the country, right? Uh, no. Not really. I mean, we still have a president. Did you right see him now? sitting at that little desk? It looked like a kindergartner's desk. <laughs> and Dude, make all the I don't know, man. That's, that's the terrifying. Whole, the whole the optics are just it's just nuts. I mean, the, well, the whole on, thing is nuts. Well, he said on the, sixty days. He sat on that beach for what a week, two weeks, oh, two I weeks know. at least. Yeah, just after there. going to California for a week. Did yeah. You see the thing about St- uh, Stephen King? He's a oh, liberal anyway, right? of course. Yeah, but he was like uh, dogging Trump and Vance for not campaigning on on Labor Day. Uh huh. Right. They, oh, Labor Day on okay. Labor Day yeah. of all days. While I guess Kamala, they're damned if they do and damned if exactly. they don't. Exactly, and so and and somebody said, "Oh, well, what was President Biden doing?" He said, "Doing his job." <laughs> oh, really? And that's when they torched him because he's been on a beach, <laughs> yeah. right, for right. like nine days. Yeah. yeah, he did it on Twitter. And so yeah, yeah. so they they sent Only- a picture. They sent a picture of Biden, like you know, under the lounge chair or under the umbrella, <laughs> passed out. You know, they're checking on his breathing and, every and once in a while. And you know what's fucked up is that Holding Trump actually yeah, went yeah. to Virginia. Now, we spoke lightly about this uh, last week, I believe, where they're giving him a hard time with about... Uh, At the Arlington celebrating Cemetery? The, yeah, the, yeah. You know, when he, was, when he was like, you know, the anniversary who's giving, of the... Who's giving him a hard time? Uh, Everyone. The, the press? The media. Yes. Well, the, yeah. We, do you, tell the whole story about the gold, the gold Star families. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, there's uh, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, no, there was a, an, a there was an, uh, oh, a, there was a follow up. There were a bunch of the the gold star families that. So somebody posted. Was it Kamala or Kamala? So what? So what happened was they asked for permission to bring a private pr- photographer yes, to the yep. event. Yep, yep. Okay, and there was a cemetery individual, a cemetery park ranger type of person that you know physically blocked the Trump party from. I mean, it was a solemn ceremony presentation. The dude was. Way out of line, right? But he he went to block somebody physically, and there was like some you know stern looks, right? Like, what are you doing? Why are you blocking us, right? And they blew that up. The media blew that up into a an altercation for a photo op for Trump in a politici- politicized you know. So that's what Harris jumped on. Well, Harris was like, she jumped on it, and then in response to that, oh, the yeah. Gold Star uh, families chimed in. Oh, they hate her. They basically said, in. you have never talked to us, you have never called us, you've never asked us to be guests. We asked you guys to, to come out and, yes. and celebrate 
mm. you know, each one a, of them celebrate. Filmed? Maybe is a wrong word, but you know, mem- memorialize right. uh, yeah. their their, right. their fallen loved ones. Each one and of they the said, Gold Star families, and they gave them the Heisman. They filmed a video, like a a, a personal response video to to Harris's you know dogging of Trump. They are not happy with her or or Biden. Hey, remember, he was checking his watch. They shouldn't be. Yeah, checking and she watch. wasn't at the at Dover. What, the, what, what the do they call it when they receive the bodies? Home? Yeah. Uh, there's a ceremony when they receive the bodies at uh, Dover Airfield. Uh, yeah, at Dover, and and he's checking his watch, and she's not there, right? Right. Uh, and 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 they're like, I'm not going to sit here while he checks his watch. Oh, they were so know. offended. The Gold Star family. They yeah. should be. You know, it's just, it's just a sign of the times, man. It's just what they do, and I and I hate generalizing people like that, but it's it's sincerely that's what's going on it's right now. It's a massive lack yeah. of self awareness. How about this? Um, this uh, gang in uh, Colorado taking over the Venezuela uh, in Aurora. Aurora. Yeah. Well, there's another in one Aurora. in Chicago now. Well, f- so there is from a, reportedly there's a response to that. The Hell's Angels have pulled together. Well, and they've offered to per- per- patrol. Well, I, from I heard that's yeah. been debunked. I heard the, well, I heard well, both well. things were debunked, but and I, I can't I can't believe anything right now. So I know. Um, yeah, the Aurora you know. police were like, uh, "Yeah, this is uh, not happening." And they said they did not take yeah. over a building, but they what? but maybe they have a political agenda too. You of don't know. Well, yeah, anymore, they don't want to. Right it looks bad. Yeah, it yeah. does look bad. And the Hell's Angels, uh, someone called out. They said, "Yeah, they used footage from like a couple years ago." Of oh, Hell's them Angels. like mobilizing. Correct. Dude, yeah, some crazy. of the videos that they want... put out there that were, they had like the ten by ten tents out there was clearly a function going on. So there's a nose right here. It says, "What's going on in Colorado with the Hell's Angels?" and uh, the News Nation put out there, Police Aurora, Colorado, responded to social media claims that the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club is headed to this uh, state and said uh, they do not believe the post to be credible, despite the Aurora Police Department told News Nation affiliate KDVR it's continuing to monitor the situation. Well, I got to tell you guys, I haven't gotten a call. You know, uh, well, oh, well, to your ride mom, your Indian? Yeah, to ride my Indian up there. <laughs> well, your mom has that card, too. I, so. And she, yeah, mom, I, I got to go find that. Her, call, get a, call that guy and go, hey, are you guys doing this? But you know what? It, <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it may, it may need to come down to something like that. Well, I think, and, I think it ultimately will. Vigilante. Again, whether they took over an, a, an apartment, and I heard it happened in Chicago. Is that true or not? Um, if it is, they're going to start happening more and more until yeah. something, dude, someone stands up and corrects it. If the, yeah, popula- well, it, if the population, if the populace of a city does not feel safe at some point, they will take matters into their own hands. Right. And yes. in New York, the like, latest... Like Dearborn, Michigan? Well, the latest stat came out from Manhattan. Yeah, 75%. 75% of crime in Manhattan right now, illegal alien involved. At some point... Yeah, there were, there were qualifiers if, to that. It was like violent crime in this certain yes. part of town. But yes, Still, that, those statistics are... I'm just saying. They are true. Now, uh, the, the thing is, are our politicians being bought off by the cartels to just look the other way? You know, right, you have to you have to ask yourself. Hey, money is it, powerful. The, money is very powerful. There, you, you you never know what the real story is behind all of that because there's something behind this this mass migration and this and the opening of the borders and everybody being okay with it. You know, real right. people they're not okay with it. The people in Washington and and the uh, and the power structures of of the cities right. they seem to be okay with it and they're and they're actually supporting and encouraging it in any way that they possibly can, including giving just handouts yep. uh, uh, all day long. Why? But here's the thing. You know, this is something that Harris know. has that I think no other politician has. She is a chameleon with all these different accents <laughs> and she can talk to whoever she's addressing in the most, you know, like convincing way. I saw her do sign language. Yeah, she did sign language. She, she got a country accent. She's got a, you know, like a South, a South black accent. Yes. And she did the, what's the, the big chicken? Uh, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say foghorn, 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 like foghorn, 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 foghorn. Oh, dude, they are. She torching. spoke French. Remember when she says "big plan, big that, plan"? Oh, yeah. That was so <laughs> embarrassing. She's in, she's in a lab with like top-notch French, French scientists, scientists, and she's talking to them like they're toddlers. <laughs> oh, do, do you anyway. guys have that? Like, bitch, of I can her? speak English, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Producer, better than she can. What's, what was the question? I was going to say, do you have the footage of her doing her little accents? Her foghorn? I, I sent it to you. I don't know where. Yeah, where just, it is, do, just do uh, Harris accent. Um, what, not, not monologue. Uh, what do you call it when there's a whole bunch of them? Montage. Compilation. Montage. Oh, here. I found it. In case you can't find it. It's like, there's the like cringe reel? Yeah, there it is. That's good. 
When did that come out? January. It won't be on that. Oh, it won't yeah. be on that one. Yeah, okay, sorry. Too. There's one that says accent. You might have to put accent in there. It's comical. Oh, it really <clears throat> is. I mean, it's just like anybody else. I mean, I mean, you hear uh, some of these other politicians. I'm going to include Biden in this one. When they're talking to a bunch of black people, it's like all of a sudden they become ebonically I know. driven. I'm I, like, know. What? I know. Yeah, it, there's a bunch of them from recently. So, oh, and, and Hillary Clinton does it too. I ain't no ways tired. Like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're Hillary Clinton. Let me see if they can I mean, it's kind of like you're in a. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank <laughs> a union, union member, member for pay. I, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> that boy's about as nervous as a cat with a 50 foot tail and a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> That's what we know. I don't need your love. I got my bandages to keep me warm. <laughs> same, same speech. Thank unions for paid family leave. Thank unions for your vacation time. Oh, that sounded much different. She's in a different it, part of the it, country. The ex- yeah, different state. It's nauseating. Same speech. I wonder if same day. I mean, do yeah, I, think it was. I mean, does does Trump do that? No, I've never heard him do that. No. How about other? Unless he's making fun of someone. Yeah, but, but let me ask you this. Let me. I know this is maybe let me ask you this. this. This is sort of a left turn. Right. But did you have a, have a best friend like when you were little, and they you started to sound like them, like or you got accused of sounding like them? Like my son, he hangs out. He hangs out with a guy from Austin. He's like a totally mellow dude, and then suddenly my son was like, "We all mellow." And I was like, "You can." I mean, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this for Harris. No, but that's but true. Have, did you guys that's ever something do that? the kids do though? You yeah, did you ever do that when you were a kid? You ever absorb? It's, it's just not. It's not just kids. It's it's human nature. Yeah, we adapt. We yeah. become who we're birds of a feather. You know, sure. so it, you, you you become. It's the culture. Yeah. It's the dialect. That's why yeah. you have dialects in different areas of the of the. Yeah, country. but normally you pick up the dialect when you live there for a certain amount of time, right? Not yeah. just like that afternoon. Uh, oh no 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 <laughs> no! no right. I, it was kind of like a segue to kind of childhood yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, but it, is. It, it, oh, made, oh. it made me think of it made me think of uh, how you can you can absorb <laughs> sounding like your best friend or using the same. I don't know what they are. Not colloquialisms. 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 Colonials, you're close. Yeah, colonials. Colonials. You use the same colonials as your friend. <laughs> anyway, but jeez, good memories. Yeah, well, well, you know, memories. Yeah, memories. like TV memories. Oh, yeah. Well, y'all lived abroad, so did you pick up the local colloquialisms? Well, I, I, I did. I, I had no TV overseas. It was. I mean, from your friends. Uh, you well, didn't have well, any friends either. Oh, I didn't have any uh, friends. <laughs> no, I had friends on TV. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of weird because. TV people. I mean, to, to, before we jump into the, the TV stuff, I, I do because my accent. I have all kinds of accents, and it comes out all the time. Because you know, I have DJ I have family. Accent. Yeah, I do. I mean, I have friends on, on the East Coast, and they're hardcore with with their dialect, with the and, R's, the cars. And yeah, it's just in the bars. You know, I am a product. I'm a product of basically everywhere I grew up. You know, being in El Paso, I can whip out a, an, an El Paso kind of dialect a little bit here and there. Or it's just weird. It really is weird. And it kind of like, wherever I go, and if I'm hanging out with somebody, and they have a kind of an accent, I'll pick up that, I'm, and I'll I'm kind saying, of change it. Does, it. it does happen. It's, but it turns, not like her. So we just yeah. letting her off the hook? No, we're no, not. We're, we're not. not. We're no. not. It just but made, me, it made it, me think of that. But the only reason I do it is just because I've lived there, and I used to talk like that a little bit. You know, it's just like you just pick it up. And then, so when, if like, if there was someone to come in here, and I were to hang out with them three or four hours, and we start drinking or something like that, next thing you know, I'm going to be sounding like I'm from Boston. Mm-hmm. And it's or, just, or Bill Cosby usually right. defaults to Bill <laughs> yeah. Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, speaking of Bill Cosby, you know there was a, uh, you know, the the childhood TV shows. It, it, it's kind of it trips me out because when you think of Bill Cosby and you know all the the weird shit that he has going on right now and the raping, the it is Spanish fly. Spanish. He has not been in the news for a no, long I'm sure time. He just wants to, you know. Well, he's still just die of old age. Yes, die of old are age. Are they still go away. pressing yeah. charges? There's a lot of people days? are like, no, that. they dropped everything. He's released. He's gone, man. Yeah. He's 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 gone. I mean, he's out. And what's know. his life like right now? How old is he? He's fucking ninety. Well, I don't know, but I, don't I, know. I, I he's I, old. I'm pretty sure he's not uh, luring anybody to his hotel room and 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 roofing them. Well, he's probably. I'm pretty sure those days are over. <laughs> I mean, yes. he, he may. Be he's just, 87. Yeah, I mean, you just don't get around like you used to. At that age. Well, and I'm pretty sure no woman is going to be stupid enough to. There's like 70 women that have I've, been I've duped. Heard, 
So the 83-year-old uh, was released from prison after his conviction of sexual assault charges was overturned by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in 2018. He was sentenced to three to ten years in prison. He's already out. Yep. So yep. how much is Bill Cosby worth, do you think, right now? A shit ton. $37 million. Well over $100 million, I bet. That show was huge. What about you? What say you? Twenty-five. This is going to blow you away. I Four hundred million. I believe God. It. Think of, think of all the shit that he's well, been involved should, in. Then there should be a civil suit. I mean, those women should get some of that money. They've been traumatized by him. Well, think about hey, it. Hey, uh, hey, hey. He had he had his, his comedy, his stand up, yeah, the yeah. records, and then Fat had, Albert. Then he had uh, was it I Spy? He was at some spy show back in the sixties oh, or seventies. Then, yeah. then he got, they didn't pay anybody. Back yeah, then, they didn't though. pay it. <laughs> then he was in the Fat Albert, which was his creation, I believe. Um, he did all the voices too, and, uh, and then he, was he was a talented guy. Then he, and he had the all that show, and he had all that Jello pudding pop. Yeah, money. the Jello <laughs> stuff. He had a dark, yeah, he, a dark, he, dark, dark secret going on. Man. Until the Cosby Show went away, he was making bank, and then it was in syndication. You know, and then he did a lot of stand up too, right? You can make a lot of money if you. Oh, put, his stand ups were uh, great. Put your put his stand ups were great because he was really clean. I mean, it's kind of like a Jerry Seinfeld. Except for that kind of Spanish fly joke that he told. Right. Yeah, but you'd have to know to know. But, you know, it's just, but it's well, just like. Well, now we know. Yeah, well, we all know now. <laughs> My favorite's uh, always like, damn it, get in here. I'm not, damn it. I'm Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, get over here. <laughs> Dad. It is funny. It, it, I, well, it's just, again, it, c- it catches me off guard when you think about it. And it's just, you know, but it does bring back a bunch of a flood of memories of, of, of those TV shows that we used to watch back, yeah. back during that time. I mean. Uh, I mean, what at that time? I mean, my favorites. I don't know about your favorites. Well, so hold on, what age group? What, what age period well, are we I would, talking about? I would say uh, okay. Uh, you know, I would say anywhere between like sixty-five to maybe eighty. I'm not that old yet. Ish. Well, you got you had reruns. Like <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I'm only fifty-three. Well, I used to watch. Uh, well, there, there, well, nineteen sixty. For me, you always had the weekend. You had the cartoons in the weekend, which Paul. Got, has PTSD on the, yes, the cartoon. I do. I totally yeah. do. But outside of that, uh, <laughs> Jibber Jaw. I mean, um, outside of that, I had what I'd called sick day TV shows, where if you were home sick from school, uh, there was a set of TV shows I always watched, and, and a couple of them were, uh, if you remember this, Love American Style. Sure. It had, it was a, it was a half hour show, I believe, but it had multiple stories in it. And Richie Cunningham was in it. He didn't play Richie Cunningham, but you had the big stars of the time uh, play. Yeah, sixty nine to seventy four. And I remember their theme song. You should play their find their theme song. I have never even heard of this. I've heard of it. I don't think I. I don't think I was old enough to get into that. What was it? Love American style. Love American style. See if you could find the theme song. Um, I just remember it had fireworks in it, and I haven't heard this. I probably. think it was an instant channel changer, and I have to go walk up and change the channel. <laughs> you know, right. you had to go <laughs> the big trunk to get to the other three channels that we had, <laughs> and then you got to switch over to UHF. There it is. <laughs> Wow. Right. See, out. Yeah. Chick, 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 chick. That dates the <laughs> shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, flip it really Go quick. to UHF. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was kind of a comedy. And then your dad's like, don't touch the TV. Oh, hell no. We're touching it. Turn you know? it on, Bozo Buckets. Yeah. And, and then another one, which was not a, uh, a happy show, was. Uh, uh, was it Eddie's Father? Is that what it was called? Uh, the ballad. The, the, court, the ballad. The, the courtship court, of oh, yeah. Eddie's Father. Yeah. Never heard of that. With, uh, oh, with God. The Hulk was in it. You must have been a teenager then, because that stuff was not. No, I was. Like, dude, this is random shit you're yeah. pulling out of here, man. No, like, I, I've I've heard of it. I just would it would change the Sean, channel immediately. Have you? What was it? Either one of these? Amer- no, I've heard of Love American Style. Yes. Okay. Oh, but, how about this one? Oh, that's with the Hulk guy. No, I haven't seen this one. Uh, Bill Bixby. Yeah. Yeah, Bill Bixby. There he is. Yeah, that's Fred. Yeah, I've never seen this. You get yeah. this? I'd only watch this. It sounds like the Beatles. It was the Monkees. Was it? I don't know. Again, only when I was home sick from school, for some reason. This and Love American Style. I, when I was home from school, it was game shows. Or yeah, there, was was car- like, there was cartoons, you know. When you get I mean, to the, the afternoon, the, you could get to the cartoons because the kids start coming home for school. You could watch yeah, Underdog. Was t- or This was typically in the morning. How bizarre. Yeah. In the middle of the, the day, you had soaps and you had game shows. And then you had some other syndicated stuff. But 
Game shows, I'll go watch Price is Right. Yeah, or, the Price is Right. Uh, you know, whatever else is on. Card Sharks. Uh, card Sharks. Yeah. yeah. That was How about awesome. Family Feud? The guy that just made out Higher with everybody. Lower, Richard seven. Dawson. That was in the evening, though, wasn't it? That wasn't yeah. out there in the day. No, it was. It was in the evening. And we, I never wa- I watched it. So hold on. Later in life, twenty five thousand dollar pyramid when it was. Yeah, yeah, we had. Oh, yeah. We had oh, yeah. Price is Right. We had. Well, that was a lot of twenty thousand dollar pyramid. We had uh, Wheel of Fortune. Win, lose, or draw. Was How it? about the ten thousand dollar pyramid? We just mentioned that twenty thousand. Twenty five. Twenty thousand dollar. Was it twenty five? Well, I think they started changing twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five thousand. I think it started. Was there one called Joker's Wild? Joker's Wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's where they Joker's they'd, they'd spin the wheels and they would come up. <laughs> what was the one? Like was it like, wasn't rigged. What was the one that was like whammies? No whammies. No whammies. Stop. That's press your luck. Yeah, but that came that. later. It yeah. was later. I watched that in high school. Yeah, that was fun. That was great. That wasn't eighties. I don't believe because you'd have to have the technology to put that board together. And what's up with that? Whenever I think of Price is Right, I think of uh, what's his name? Right, Bob the, Barker. Bob Barker. Bob Barker with the weird ass long. That pencil. was the style. The oh, oh. The so pencil s- microphone? Yes. So speaking he'd of that, hold you, you, it, he'd hold had, it like it was a chopstick. Yeah, like Hollywood Squares, right? Oh, and they had, they had the them. Tic-tac-toe? Didn't they have them shaded or something? No, no. You didn't t- know it who was they a, were. It was a tic-tac-toe. Yeah, they had right? these comedians on there. Yeah, the and comedians. You ask the Paul comedians Lynn, a question, yeah. and then you have to say whether they were correct or right or wrong. That, well, yeah. the comedians were. always had the joke ahead of time, right? Yeah. You know. It was Joan Rivers was on a lot. Yeah, Paul Lynn. Paul Lynn. Yeah. That must have been so fun for them. Goldie oh, Hawn yeah. was on it. Yeah. What was the name of that one again? Hollywood Squares. Hollywood, Hollywood Squares. Squares. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, what's the one uh, where there's like six um, people, six celebrities, and there's two uh, contestants, and they're trying to get the match the most match game, right? Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, Remember I don't match think I saw game? That one. No. Yeah. So they rebooted it with Alec Baldwin, but they used to have it with uh, Chuck Buller or somebody. And, so they'd ask a question and, and they would say, you know, we pulled a hundred people. Uh, what's your favorite, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Vaca- vacation spot. And, and everybody, uh, everybody would is. write down the That's secret. Right everybody would write down their secret one and then, and then lock, oh, it, lock, it, the host, lock, yeah. lock in their answers. Right. Is that Chuck Woolery? No, no, it's not Chuck Woolery. That's the, uh, the match uh, game. Uh, uh, Just like, yeah. But I recognize that guy. Uh, yeah. He's, he's, He's as famous as, as any of them, but they'd lock it in, and then and then the and then the the contestant would say something, and then he'd try to match the answers that the sure that the panelists. Would I'm not give sure that. I ever watched that though. No, I never watched that. No, that what, was, what that about was I did. What about Jeopardy? No, that that, was, again, that was a nighttime one. But but oh, how how, how late? I mean, how early was it? How long has it been around? It's Jeopardy. been on decades i think just like wheel of so fortune ju- just like the one, the other ones we're talking about here. Well, i don't think they're they've been on this old but uh um just like wheel of fortune has been on for years and, and you know like all these people that we know 75 like drew who's the new yeah, the first episode 64 for, was yeah 64 march right so they've been around the whole time art fleming so who's the guy that took over bob barker Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Yeah. You know if these guys grab these hosting like opportunities, yeah. they're set. They're in it for life. Yeah. I mean, they're in it for life. I mean, yeah. they're already set, but they're in it for life. And then I saw that, what's his name, took the Wheel of Fortune, Ryan Seacrest. Seacrest, yeah. He's now Wheel of Fortune because he took over Alex Trebek. No. Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak. Oh, Pat Sajak. Who, who, what was Alex Trebek? He was Jeopardy. Jeopardy. He just died a couple years ago. And they've been, oh, they've been cycling through a handful of Hosts. Yeah. Yeah. That, with a bunch of spares. I think the, the uh, worst. Bl- I think Blossom is on yeah, there. Yeah. And Ken Jennings tried it a while. Yeah, and it, was, oh, it she from? Awful. Uh, Mayim Bialik from uh, Blossom and from uh, Big, the Bang. Big Bang. Yeah. I tell you, what, when yeah. I think of celeb- uh, uh, Jeopardy, she- I can't help but think of SNL. Right. <laughs> with that, Alex Trebek. that is the yeah, best with, uh, game show spoofs ever with, with, with Burt Reynolds and uh, Sean Connery yes, and, yes, <laughs> oh yes. My God, Sean the Connery. absolute the absolute best Suck game show today. SNL so, what anyway, about uh, Let's Make a Deal did you guys watch that one oh, somewhat yeah yeah that was kind of weird was, though you could have this box of whatever or what's, what's behind, behind door number one yeah. let's find out what's behind yeah. door number two what, so people would like they'd have like a box of pencils yeah, yeah. yes and you get screwed and the other one's a car yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's then, not fair but then the next one is a goat you yes. know <laughs> a goat. yes i wonder if you, you get know. to take the goat i would like you i mean that's a good it. eating do you really get yeah. to keep the goat or i doubt it I well, uh, give me the 50 bucks it's worth i'll go 
Well, you know, modern modern ones, they, they kind of made, I don't know if they've always been trying to do a resurgence of game shows, but uh, when Deal or No Deal came out with the, the case, right. remember uh, the... Oh. Oh, my God. No, not Deal or Deal. It's, uh, what's deal. it called? Yeah, that's deal or no deal. With, oh, it the, is deal. with the, the twenty six cases and the girls. I yes. think I think the yeah. big big Howie Howie I, Mandel. Mandel. I think the biggest new one is uh Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Million Spare. Oh, yeah. that was good. Yeah, that was fun. With Regis. Mm-hmm. That was intense. Yeah. Call a friend. It was. Call a friend. Call I mean, a lifeline. Did you Yes, yes, yes. And you get to call a lifeline. Did, you, right. did you see the first guy that that uh won the million dollars? Uh uh-uh. uh. Well he he uh saved his lifelines to the very end, right? He had still had three and he's asking this question. And he goes, mm, he already knew the answer. I think, I, I think I'd like to use a lifeline. So he called his dad. Hey, dad, oh. I'm on who wants to be a millionaire and I'm using my lifeline to call you to tell you I'm going to be a millionaire. I don't need you to answer the question. And he answered yes, the question right then. Yes, I he do just, remember that. He just body slammed. Yeah, I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought deal, deal or no deal was awesome with the cases. and. Yeah, because you win a lot of million. Uh, they, they, they put up a lot of money out on that yes, show. Yes, and, and they get greedy, right? Yeah, yeah oh God, you are going to Guess your way right back to the poorhouse. Yep, they opened you? up the case with four bucks in it, <laughs> yeah. and they had like the other. They, I, I and thought they had, it was going to be half a million. Nope. Oh, Sorry. Brutal. It's brutal. Like, take be, the deal. Just screaming at the show. That's what they. That's how they hook you. They they get your mind yes, all right. literally you interested in this strange person's life somehow. You know. Uh, you know Kim was on. Um, uh, well, she was. She went to a taping of The Price Is Right, and they, oh, nice. Yeah, and they called like the person next to her. Or something like that. She was just mad. God, that would suck. <laughs> that would suck. Dylan Mulvaney was on Prices, right? Oh, that's right. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, God. What, like a celebrity deal? Oh, no, no, no. He was a contestant. What a contestant. dingbat, man. This he was, was before he was a girl. Dingbat. When he was still a boy. No, well, God. he was doing before his he best. Just, before he brought down Bud Light? <laughs> he, he was yes. extremely yes. flamboyant. Oh, boy. Yes. Yeah, he won something. He was like rolling on the floor. Oh, he was doing gymnastics oh, or splits or something. Once you, in once, other words, he was trying to get his 15 minutes of fame yeah. like right there yes. in his moment. Uh, yes, he was. He, he's just a theater person, okay? He's just, he has jazz What's hands he up to these stuff, days? I, I haven't heard or... Do we want to uh, know? No, I don't, but it's like he just, after that Bud Light thing, he disappeared. Yeah. Oh, I, there was so much hate, I, I would imagine. I mean... Yeah. No, I mean, I don't want anybody to have that kind of hate, but still, he... he man... All right, wow. so hey, what, what? Who is the longest game show host of all time? Pat Gotta Sajak. be Bob Bob Barker. Bob Barker. Oh no! You say mm. Pat Sajak? Pat no. Let's say you. Oh, Alex Trebek. I was going to say those oh, are just those are three good. Advocate. Those are three good guesses. Uh, the longest game show host is Pat Sajak. There you go, and that's Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Like I said, it's been on for yeah, 40 years. Damn. So the thing same about guy, the, same the guy. The thing about the Wheel of Fortune. I'd get um, snarky on I, that show. I, that oh, change sure. that I didn't <laughs> like was when like, you win your money at Wheel of Fortune, you win the money, uh, you win some money. If you're in the round and you have, let's say, 2000 bucks. So now you just win the money and if you win whatever, that the little pie has a little trip or something, you get it. But before, you, they used to have turned this this wall around and you'd have a selection carousel. of you'd spend your money. You had to buy things it. That yeah. you buy. He's like, oh, I, I got $2,000. And, and then the announcer's like, Hey, do you would like to buy this trip to downtown Pennsylvania and go to Hershey's? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you they, could they try quit to- doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they quit, no. but I thought it was so great. You could, you could buy this brand new car, you know, for two thousand. Yeah. It's just crazy. Or, yeah. You got fifty bucks left. I'll take the Dalmatian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's no different than the, us the going statue, to Chuck E. Right? Cheese or or wherever with yeah, exactly. our with our, yeah. with our you coupons. Spend your coupons, right? Yeah, yeah it was cool though. I, I like that one. And now you just win the money. I guess it took up too much time. Ah, uh, maybe. That's pretty sure that's. What well, it you was. guys, you, I gotta say, I mean, not that you know, not pity party here, but. You guys were lucky because when I went overseas, there was basically in in Japan there was the same commercial over and over and over again until the commercial was over, I mean, until the time was over, and then they were like these crazy ass like Japanese rice? shows. I mean, it'd be like this really crazy short TV commercial, you know, that was obnoxious. Everything over there is obnoxious, over the top. Yes, and it would be you would watch that eight times in a row until the segment was over, and then to go back to the show, right? So we did, we really didn't watch a lot of TV in Japan. There was, there was stuff that was dubbed. We like we watch combat, combate with with what's his name? Who's the dude that got killed the in the, the helicopter? Spanish. The helicopter accident on filming the Twilight. You guys remember that with the two little kids? Oh yeah. Um, what was his name? He is combat is the name of the TV show. They call I it remember. combate. 
starring blah blah blah. I forgot his name. He he died. Bruce Lee? No, no. He died during the filming of. uh, I want to say Ernest Borgnine. The Twilight. Ernest Borgnine did not die. <laughs> it's not that. Yeah, I think he'll get it here in a second. Vic Morrow. Vic Morrow. Vic yes. Morrow. That's it. Anyway, so you, close. We would watch. <laughs> we would watch these shows that were dubbed in Spanish Jan with Michael obviously Vincent. no no subtitles. So did you learn Spanish, Spanish. dude. I should have. That was second and third grade. But in Indonesia, nothing. No TV. Yeah. Well, you got to play craps in the None. back alley, though. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, that's all we had. I was selling alcohol out of <laughs> my. To- Get to flood the back of the house. You were bootlegging uh, moonshine, weren't you? It's bootlegging so, cassette tapes. Yeah. So, so you know, obviously, no MTV, right? Nothing. That was what you guys grew up on MTV. I'm sure during the during the 80s. Oh, yeah. you, no, you think I had cable? I didn't have cable. Early, well, <laughs> early 80s. What, what MTV would have been? What in mid 80s? Yes. Yeah, yeah, probably 19, uh, early 80s, right? Four yeah. to 90. Let's say yeah. Uh, MTV and the first MTV video was. Video, video killed, killed the radio, radio star, star. Yes. by the, the Buggles. The Buggles. All right, so here's a question, a trivia question. Right, here. Go. So in uh, the fall 2019 TV survey, 20 TV shows that define the 1970s, pick out the top five or six. Top five or six <clears throat> TV shows that define the 70s. The 70s. The Duke. 70s. Archie e- Bunker. E- evening. Dallas. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with MASH. Uh, MASH is number one. <laughs> and, um, Archie Bunker. Ding, 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 Our ding, own ding. family was uh, number three. Uh, Love Boat. Uh, didn't make the well, it made the uh, list, but it didn't make the top five. So we so already got match, three of the top so five. Archie yeah. Bunker, yeah, match Ma- Archie Bunker, all in the family. Archie Bunker and Gilligan's uh, Island, Dukes of Hazard. Uh, they have on here uh, for number two is Happy Days. Oh, oh yeah, that's how a no-brainer. That? Yeah. I got Gilligan's Island. Is that Laverne too, and Charlie? Uh, it's not on there. Charlie's Angels, Chucks. It yeah. was so sexy. Ooh, can you name them? Jill Kelly and Sabrina. Yes. Damn. And, and who were the actors? Farrah Fawcett. And Jacqueline, Jacqueline Smith. Jacqueline Smith. Uh, Kate. K- Kate Jackson. Kate Jackson. Kate uh, Jackson. Was it Cheryl Ladd? Cheryl Ladd replaced Farrah Fawcett. That was her yeah. sister. Oh. Oh, they're both yeah. hot. Yes. And the uh, 1970s Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Oh, Jim Belushi or John Belushi. Yeah, that, that actually made the, uh, the John top. Belushi and Dan Top-top. Aykroyd. You know what? Yeah. You know what shows, you know, I don't know. They couldn't do it Bill today, Murray. but they used to have Battle of the Network Stars. Remember oh, that? Yeah. No, I what, don't know that. Was it like through? Was it like silly kind of? Uh, uh, no, like that was like it was like, like Olympic type shit. Yeah, Swimming they're they're and, running a hundred meters or yards oh, or whatever. Yeah. About like it. obstacle uh-huh. courses, yeah. kind yeah. of silly things. But you'd have like Linda Carter and Lou Ferrigno and all the '70s stars. I want to see. So you'd have ABC against CBS against NBC. I want to see Wonder Woman in a dash. I would like to see that. Oh, she's, uh, she did it she every has, week. But she has to wear her Wonder Woman outfit. She wears. She wears the. Uh, the <laughs> there's Grizzly oh Adams. Oh my god! Grizzly Adams. Adams guy there. We got Cheryl Ladd right well, there. Melissa Gilbert there from L- P- Prairie on the what was the house, the, house, the, house on the Prairie. Prairie? Who's she the was creepy, cute. hairy guy next to her though? That's uh, that's Casey Kasem. No. Oh no, no, that's Tom. Uh, was that Pat that, Harrington? That's Robert Kennedy Jr. What are we looking at here? <laughs> what is that picture? <laughs> oh, that's the guy from... Um, that's Tom... Oh, damn. What is his I've name? seen him in a bunch of 70s shows. I know. Me too. Robert What's Conrad? It? No. Uh, oh, that may be Con- oh, the guy from Bobo Black Sheep. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, that's it. Nicely Robert done. Robert Conrad, yeah. We are poor little lambs who what? have lost I- our way. That's what they used to sing. Ba, ba. That's Baba ba, Black Sheep. It was the name of the sitcom. I know. That was the, that but was I, the I opening do, song. I don't yeah, remember the him. song. Yeah, it started off with a siren right after that. And God, was that him? A little drum set kicking. Is that in. what he looks like today? Good lord! Oh, he's ripped. Check uh, him out, dude. He's... You know my my memory of Baba ba, Black Sheep. Man, we all get. I was oh. in. Oh, I, this I was is gonna in, be racist as fuck. It is totally <laughs> gonna be racist. So I grew up a poor black child. <laughs> and <laughs> name that movie. Name White that movie. Shadow. Jerk, jerk, the jerk. <laughs> oh, the jerk. Very nice. Uh, no. So I was in kindergarten and we're at uh, after school program or I don't know whatever. And, and I was at the top of the little hill in the back of the playground area. And I was at the top of the hill doing it. And we all did our. We were being the planes, right? Oh. Yeah. And I, was, and I did my thing and I was running around. Well, some other kid was playing Bigfoot or Sasquatch or something. Threw a rock. My plane went down. Wow! Smacked me right in the head. I literally was doing the Baba Black Sheep thing, and uh, and then I was kind of woozy, and I was stumbling up the steps, and the teacher saw me, and she freaked out because I was apparently blood was sprouting out of my head. It was crazy. 
And so, oh. they, yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, then you they didn't kick his butt. They. Oh, I mean, dude, I'm five. Oh, I would have just taken him out. No, I killed him. But <laughs> yeah, I took the rock. I took the rock. I drowned him with my blood. I just smashed his stomped him. Skull. You know what's crazy though? I convinced. Did he damage your hearing aids? I convinced those whoever were some big old things. Imagine. My, oh, yeah. <laughs> my mom was not home. You had to plug him in. By the way, <laughs> God, that's so <laughs> racist. He had fucking extension cord. <laughs> By the way, I did not have hearing aids. I got them the next year. Thank you very much. Oh, anyway, I convinced well, a lady. Did that, that lead to it? I mean. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> He sat there <laughs> whacking my ears with the rock. Oh my god! Bang, bang, bang. And we got bang. everything. I was like, I can't hear now. <laughs> so what size you know, batteries they use back then? They were huge. D- <laughs> like, anyway, listen. D- like so nine volt. they take me home. They take me home. My mom is not home. I convince them to leave me on the front steps of my house. And you're five. I'm five. I'm five. And my mom comes home and she's like, because I was wearing this, you know, big f- and you're uh, bloody puffy. <sighs> yes, a big puffy green jacket that's now brown, right? Because green and Red makes brown. And so she's like, what the fuck? Because I got blood caked in my hair and on my... And she freaked out, rushed me to the emergency room or whatever. I got a whole bunch of stitches because I had a hole in my head. That's my Baba Black Sheep memory. There you go. That's when when you're allowed to get hurt back in the day. Now you can't. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. But crazy. I'm sure they would have gone to jail had they. Yeah, that's what... I never watched... Done that uh, nowadays. No. I always wanted to watch Baba Black Sheep, but for some reason I... I never did. Well, it was on TV. Did. It was like one of those shows where, you good. know, the timing worked out. I don't know if I saw it overseas when I lived there and it just came on at night. You know, cause they have very what, select shows. What what uh, war was it? Was it Korea? I think it was, it was Japanese because there were World War Japanese. II. Yeah. Was it World War II? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It was the P-41s or whatever they are. Yeah. I, I, with I the, know you know, with the, with the tiger face on hey, the side. Mr. Producer, is, is there any way you could pull up the the yeah, the soundtrack or the uh, the title of the sound? I want to hear the sound. The beginning of it. What do they call that? The opening the title? The theme The theme song. song. Yeah. Yeah. song? so hard. Theme I think, song I think, of Baba Black Sheep. I think MASH was the first Korea. Uh, Dude, you know, MASH was good. Yeah, to go back and, and, and kind of do stories about Korea. Right. Well, it starts off. Uh, oh, here we go. In World War II, Marine Corps Major Greg Pappy. Oh, wow. They were known as the back sheep. There you go. There's oh, a siren. Dude, this is turning me on right now. See? They're all getting ready. They're about to get in their planes. Look and- how scrawny they are. It's like 18 music. Robert, Robert Conrad. Conrad. Dude, this is so badass. These are, I think these are P-51s. Yeah. Well, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I watched this like... Those this are not P-51s. Those P- look like the Dauntless, almost. The Corsair. It could be the P-41 or the P-36. I think but it's, it's basically, it was the everyday life that they had on base, remote, and the, the, just the different things going on. That, that real life things. I mean, like, you know, food. Different things that, that happened to them back in that time. And of See, course, that's what I was doing. friends and I was people attacking off. the base. Oh yeah. Oh, so you were that's and then you got hit down with a rock. I was peeling off and then Sasquatch hit me with a rock. They shot flack up there and they got you. They got me. Yeah, they They got got me all right. Caught some stray fire. Yeah, I went down hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well I'll tell you what we need to do. (laughs) We need to talk about our bourbon. We do. We do. This one, right. this one is a. I've been looking for 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 a while. So I, is it the official unicorn? I don't know. It's just very hard to find. Put it that way. Uh, you'll see. You'll see some uh, some of these. We actually just had one of these a couple weeks ago. You'll see these on the on the on the shelf, except for this one. This is John J. Bowman Single Barrel. So what we were trying to find earlier, which I found by luck, the distill. It's A. Smith Bowman Distillery. A right. Smith Bowling Distillery. That's why we, we were looking up Spirit um, because it's on the back of the bottle. But anyways, I I kind of right. found it on uh, the uh, Instagram. I tagged it real quick while during the break. Okay, good. So yeah, so this is the single barrel. Um, and these Only are, sixty bucks, huh? Uh, no, it was. Uh, yes, it was. It was sixty bucks. Something like that. Yeah, it I was. mean, it's you're shown right here. Yeah, right. Um, so according to this, All right, here we go. The nose, which when I first, when you first poured this, it was it had quite a bit of ethanol working on it for me. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, it opened. It never, it never left for me. No, <laughs> I gotta be honest. Hmm. 
I think it's fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of nutty. I mean, um, well, when it's got I, some spice. Well, the, the first sip I got out of it had a lot of spice. It almost reminded me of menthol. Oh, raisins. Yeah, I guess taste some mint in there. Mint or menthol. And, and when my wife tasted it, she's like, <sighs> it was too spicy for her. Right. So, on the front. Then she goes, ooh, well, the finish is really good. So, because mm. uh, it says uh, the taste, oh, it's good. Mouthfeel is medium, whatever, whoever this person is. Uh, I guess that's a nice way of saying it doesn't stand out in any way. Heat is aligned perfectly with the rest of the palate. A little oak and caramel. That's kind of a generic little thing there. It totally is. That's not really telling you anything. Of course, we kind of do the same thing. Um, but like again, I, I pick up uh, a lot of standard bourbon notes. I pick up, like I said, the menthol or a mint or something. Uh, yeah, it leaves that little aftertaste. It has a, a menthol kind of a minty aftertaste. Like a mouthwash. Uh, this is a single barrel, so each one of these is going to be different. Yes. Yeah. So all in all, uh, you know, I wouldn't, like all of them, I, I wouldn't kick this out of bed. It doesn't wow me. Right. You know? there's, there's nothing coming a- across a lot. It's, it's sweet-ish. Um, the, I get the caramel out of it now that I read it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it kind of right. throws it out, puts right. it in your mind. But uh, I got a little chocolate out of it, too, when I first uh, got, got into it right. a little bit. But... Um, stone it, fruit yeah it, it's something you can have around and 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 sip on it's not I, i'm gonna be kind of harsh if this were their if this were their standard bourbon right i would be yeah okay but the fact that they picked this out as a single barrel like they tasted this barrel and thought it would be worth bottling very disappointing all right that's that's fine yeah. what is the proof on this uh 100 i believe yeah. so it's bottle it's, is it bottle and bond no where is no, it is just uh, uh, Mr. Producer has it. <coughs> so it's a hundred proof. I believe that's what you said out there. Correct. So we, they they hand select some of the oldest barrels in the warehouse to produce a single barrel bourbon. You know, I I don't get it. I, so I'm kind of with Paul. I, I, like yeah. I said, I wouldn't kick it out of bed. But yeah, they're kind of they're kind of overselling hand selected at peak maturity by our master distiller, right? So yeah. that, that's telling me like, hey, you know. We've what? had we've had single barrels I, that dwarf this one. I, I yeah. Well, from uh, what I understand, they don't distill it. They buy their stuff from Buffalo Trace, sure. oh. and then they age it in Virginia. Oh, there you go. You can't age stuff in Virginia. Yeah, it's it says copper distilled. That doesn't mean <laughs> they did it. So this is from Virginia. Where, where, I can't read the back of this on where it was. That's distilled. interesting. Copper distilled because uh, you know when you say that, I'm kind of like, all right, well, what does that mean? And I think uh, we learned a little bit about that we at did. the uh, the Iron Root uh, Distillery one out there. In fact, it was extremely interesting how they they pick out the the different uh, levels. I wonder if this fits in the same. Uh, uh, I'm sure part. they all do that. I'm yeah. sure they if they have those in copper still. stills. But I the mean, big what pot about still? Right. I, well, I those columns know. are copper as well, right? I, I don't I don't I don't think so, but I mean I don't remember them. They're kind of shiny, chromish looking, you know. I, well, I think well, the, well, on the outside, I, I think know. the difference is not necessarily the copper; it's the style of still. It's the style of still, right? It's so it's either still column or, still. or if it's. But when they say copper still, they they do mean the teardrop shaped still. We well, yeah. usually hear pot still because it, it, it creates pot, a different. Yes. It pot. creates a different flavor, and Iron Reed even said the same thing. It says this will produce a different flavor than a column. That's interesting that that it does that. Uh, I'm tasting, there's a little bit of like muddled fruit. And I say it because I want to say it's like, like, a, like a grape or a raisin. That's or been a, sitting a, out on a counter a for a week. Yeah, something like that. Like it's, it's like a fig or like, like it's been in a wine barrel. It's, it hasn't been in one, but it's muddled. That's all I can really think. I mean, but I think like a fig, fig. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it's horrible. I just don't think it, it, it lives up to a single barrel label. All right. Well, let's. Uh, We've had better. This is not it, bad. And also, we've had better for a hundred proof. I think it's way too ethanolic to be a hundred. You know, right. you know, I think if a hundred proof, it should it should be a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I would agree with that. You know, there's. I would expect this from a hundred and fifteen proof. Maybe it needs to sit out longer. And we've talked to some folks like Stan. Shout out Stan. Uh, Total wine. Stan says that you know. There are a lot of bourbons out there, a lot of whiskeys out there that once you pop off the top and you drink. Uh, a couple rounds, you know, round like for us, a, a, a four shots out of the bottle. It drops below the shoulder, and it will take on some oxygen, some air, normal air, and um, you, you put the cork back in there, and it actually will do something to the taste. 
Yep. It actually lets it breathe a little Correct. bit more. Correct. And so it's like your second pull on it, maybe a week later, a month later, whatever, is supposed to be better. I don't or maybe know. 10 minutes later. Uh, well, no, this, no, has been sitting, this has been sitting for an hour. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah just, it's still. I was yeah. wanting another pull in 10 minutes. That's all. <laughs> Uh, uh, Virginia Straight Bourbon Whiskey Single Barrel, the John J. Bowman uh, Pioneer Spirits. I declare six five. That's right. What I was thinking, six yeah. five, six five, and also this is a hundred proof, so it puts it in a different category. And I feel comfortable. I feel confident at six five for that category. Right. I agree. Uh, I'm right at six five. Paul sounds like you're even more disappointed. Uh, I'm fine. Not that I'm disappointed. I expected more because of the difficulty of finding this. Right. And the fact that I've heard really good things about it. I'm going to go 5.5. And I'll split difference and say 6 because that's where I was going to go anyway. Because You're right. It, it's good, you know, uh, but would I go out of my way to get it? No. Yeah, I would not buy this again, personally. Yeah, I mean. With the, with the other options. Dude, that's the problem. There's yeah. like 10,000 options. Yeah. Now. Yeah, well, I'm loving yeah. the ten thousand options, and and you know I want to continue to get some more. In fact, we 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 need to go pick up the rare character from uh, Total One. I know, you know, oh, yeah. we we got it. We got authorized. They were like, it's no, it's you can't have it because it's for the concierge. I'm a concierge. What the fuck does that mean? What am I? Chop live Wolvie. We are extremely, hey. extremely very important people in that store. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hold on. Before we, we jump on, because uh, I, I hear the music coming up right now, I wanted to make an announcement for those people that don't have it already. Call it in 1845.com distillery, 1845 distillery. Google it. They have a brand new release right now. It's the oh, yeah. Double Barrel. Double Oak, double oak double, Barrel. Double Oak Barrel. Mm-hmm. Double it's, it's Oak Barrel. It's not a whiskey, barrel. though. Uh, it's a, what is it? Oh, no, it's, it's not yeah. a bourbon. It's no, a yeah. whiskey. So I mean, but you know, 115 proof. Uh, 113. You know, it's 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 solid. Uh, it's 82 bucks if you're gonna get it. I've already reserved bottle. It's not almost 90 with tax. Yeah. I struggle it's, with it. It's a aged 50 months at least. Or 51. Something. 51 yeah. months. Uh, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, we're gonna have it. We're gonna sample for the podcast whenever it gets here, and uh, I'm super happy with that. You guys got any last? Uh, comments to bring about the 70s shows no i'm good i'm good all good there was uh you know stephen king was such a jackass you know the just he's just a piece of shit i mean he was this guy like you know what if if donald trump like kills a dog his ratings will probably go up i mean just to kind of yeah, he, well, i mean you know he thinks we're irrational we think he's irrational he's kind of like, he's he's about the cia so. he's kind of like a bob de niro kind of a guy he doesn't he it's sounded super. like more and more. Mr. Producer, thank you for staying on top of shit today. Check us out uh, on Dudes Like Us on either Instagram or Facebook. Dudes Like Us. I'm Sean. I'm Paul. I am Jeff. I'm Chuck. 